Today I'm gonna to do a video over procedures for a pandemic. I'm going to go off a Word document and this is going to, going to be on the SFM Pro website under downloads. And again, those documents all open in a separate tab so you can see it there. It will not automatically download. And that way you can decide if you want it or not and you can see if you trust what's on the page or not. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing is the objective. The objective of this document is to not cause panic, but is to give useful information, specifically towards COVID-19. At this point, I think it is a 60-40 chance of significant global disruption. To me, that means that this current situation can either be and hopefully will be resolved, and that I do mean that in the short term, I understand it will be resolved long term. Uh, again, I don't think it'll be, but I, I hope it will be. Uh, you know, always hope for the best, plan for the worst. But if this does turn out to be the other 60%, then I see a catastrophic breakdown in supply chain and normal life for a period of time globally. This document will hopefully give you a chance to evaluate your situation and adjust where needed. On here, I have four pages. I'm gonna to attempt to go through them quick, but this will be a bit longer. I've had several people ask for a video along these lines, uh, a lot of people in the last few days. And this is what I feel like is the most important, concise stuff, and I'll get started. So, what standard operating procedures for typical governments. When I say typical governments, I mean not totalitarian governments like China but governments that are more you know western or at least developed countries if anything the first one is typical steps so the first thing is basic ppe recommended by local government so that first step is you know someone from the government will come on tv and they'll say um, wash your hands Careful where you go, you know, distance for all the people that are sick. If you're sick, stay home, that kind of stuff. The next step they'll go into is called recommended voluntary quarantine. And that has happened everywhere that this virus has sprung up. As of today, it's March 1st, 2020. And the recommended voluntary quarantine is the government will come out, say if you don't feel well, then don't go into work, don't take your kids to school, um, stay at home and try not to leave. The next step is low profile public and health center perimeters. What that means is when you would go to a hospital, uh, you would go inside and there would be someone kind of watching everything and you'd have people with you know, good PPE on, masks and that kind of thing in the hospital and gloves and stuff. And they would just kind of walk around and just see how people are doing. And they're doing that kind of, uh, it is triage, but this is specifically toward, you know, this virus. And then, you know, you've got um, people that are going to be there in case it looks like someone is very sick, politely and, uh, you know, with respect, take you to the side and then get a mask on you so you don't project those, um, the um, droplets out and infect other people, hopefully. And that's the kind of low profile one. So, and then in public places, that's where you have someone that's watching, they might do uh, thermometers, like at airports, that kind of stuff. It is there, but it's not restrictive. The next thing we have is obvious hot, warm, cold containment zones of clear security delineating these zones. What that means is when things get to a, a point where they already have been in China, they are in other places like Italy, South Korea, and you are at the point where the the contaminant, whatever it is in this specific case, COVID-19, where the contaminant, contaminant is uh, bad enough where you need to start isolating restrictively. So you have a hot zone where you have your people that are you know, actively shedding the disease with symptoms, really sick or dying uh, or dead. Uh, 
and then you have your warm zone where those people are being evaluated and in each one of those places your uh, your workers are in greater and greater PPE so you might have your cold zone is your entryway into a hospital or your entryway into a um, a facility or complex that has been retrofitted to house people. So that cold zone would most likely be the outer perimeter. Then your warm zone would be where you have people that have, you know, not necessarily tested, but are showing obvious symptoms and they're gonna be, you know, put to the side with fever and that kind of stuff or whatever the contaminant, <laughs> contaminant is, sorry. And a uh, hot zone, and a hot zone is where you're gonna have Full PPE, you know, air circulated, hopefully, um, you know, lots of washing, all that kind of stuff to keep stuff hopefully clean to prevent the spread. And then you're going to have, as seen in China and a few other places, and most likely more in the near future, you will have clear security delineating those zones. And so what does that mean? What does clear security mean? In Italy and China and South Korea and other places, that means hardened areas. So that means that you are going to have armed physical barriers with people at locations to prevent people from either coming into or going out of those locations. And that's something that you just need to prepare yourself for because it will happen. Um, it is going to be out there. It is already out there and it would be less of a shock to you if you pay attention to the news first of all and then realize what's happening so when that happens around you if it does you're not put into more panic it's just when things get bad enough that's what's required it is required that you have a a hard barrier that has a consequence to people trying to breach the perimeter. And agree or disagree with it, that's what is and is going to happen. The next one is uh, forced public space quarantine. What that means is you are going to have uh, public gathering places you can't go to, large you know, office buildings, schools, concerts, parks, all those kind of gathering places are gonna be deemed um, restricted by the local governing body. And in some cases, again, like in China, just because that's so obvious to everybody and everyone's seen that stuff at this point, is um, forced quarantine in places like apartments, and hotels, cruise ships, where you are forced to stay there. And in China, they were doing, you know, welding of doors, bars on doors that were bolted or welded on. So it was very serious and it is very serious. So that's what forced public space quarantine means. Next is full travel restriction of general public. This goes into that, those, those can go hand in hand sometimes where they just do no travel. And that means that the local government says, you can't leave, you cannot go to the store, you cannot go out and walk your dog, uh, you, you can't go and get gas, you can't go to the store. That's what full travel restriction for general public means. That does not mean you can't, you can go to the airport but not get on a plane. Full travel restriction means you cannot leave the place you are at right now. So if you travel a lot, like I do, you need to take into account what that means. Does that mean that uh, you need to have a backup plan? You need to have your own personal kind of um, trigger moment that you're gonna say, okay, things are at around this point, just go, you know, and deal with the consequences later. So that's something you need to consider. The next session I wanna go into is, is financial. I have two, I have personal and corporate. The first is personal. If voluntary or forced quarantine occurs, you still have bills. Ensure when the epidemic or pandemic passes, you will not be in financial legal trouble for not paying mortgage, rent, car payments, and your regular bills. Because this will pass, 
this is going to be a very uh, dynamic and panic filled situation globally. It already is. It's going to continue to be for some time. If you are in a position where you choose not to go to work and that is your choice or you choose not to take your kids to school and that is your choice, just know the governments are still going to want their taxes. You are still going to have bills and those places are still going to want their payments because their pay because your payments are going toward those companies paying their employees. And you don't want to be stuck in a situation where you have legal ramifications for making the choices you do. So if you do decide to bug out, you do decide to shelter in place, whichever option that is, make sure you are financially set for some period of time during that. The next is government. Uh, government can implement bank holidays to lessen large groups of people gathering to re reduce sickness spread. This means if power or cyber systems suffer as a result of people not coming into work or as a result of a hacker jumping on an opportunity, cash will be the most common short-term trading option. And that is typically global. Corporate. Supply chains can be affected and products can be slowed down or stopped. So right now, uh, the antibiotic issue that's going, or well, medications in general that are going on because China produces a majority of the world uh, base components for medications and then those get sent out to where they're going to to then be made into full drugs and right now that's an obvious one uh, electronics that's a pretty obvious one but it can keep growing from that and so that is a on the corporate side Number two, slowed supply chains can either be a large corporate financial concern or in some cases cause a reaction to many other businesses. And that goes back into the drugs, electronics, that can go into food, that can go in all kinds of stuff. So say a trucking industry, the trucking industry drivers say, we don't wanna go somewhere and leave our family and we don't wanna take whatever that is and drive to another location and drop that off where they could get sick and then bring that home to their family. So that's just something to keep in mind. Security. This, I have two different sections, health and physical security. For health, if obvious sick people are around you, use distance and barriers to separate yourself. Wash your hands, try not to touch your face. It's really hard not to do. I just did it a second ago. I try not to. If anything, if your face is really itching or, or you just need that scratch or something, try and use your shirt. So you can take your hand in, in your shirt and that gives you, shouldn't if you don't have to, but that gives you a barrier uh, of not touching your hands because your hands are touching all kinds of stuff all day long. You know, between handrails and doors and just stuff you're not even thinking of, window sills, pins in places, all those kinds of things can hold specifically this virus and any kind of contaminant. Next is physical security. As panic begins, there is typically a rush to buy items. This means that stores will be areas to avoid. And that is already happening in several parts of the world. It is starting to happen in the States. Hawaii had a run on the stores. New England's had a run on the stores. Wherever this virus for this specific thing starts to come into play, there are people that get nervous and they want to rush to buy stuff. When shelves in any situation start to go bare, like in hurricanes or anything else, Black Friday sales, when that starts to happen, people get agitated and or scared and they want to get their stuff. So they take it from people that are holding it next to them. And you just don't need to be in that situation. Number two, you will want enough cash on hand to deal with emergency, excuse me. You will want enough cash on hand to deal with emergencies if banking systems are overwhelmed or there is a banking holiday to reduce gathering to reduce gathering places as previously stated. So again, cash, uh, short term, that's the way to trade. If a, quarantine is if a quarantine is enacted, then 
depending on the severity, you'll be forced to stay inside or on your property. The problem with a quarantine or other major disaster is the people typically available for law enforcement or fire medical emergencies might choose to be home with their families, especially in a pandemic. They will not want to bring a disease home to then infect their loved ones. Additionally, once criminals figure out crime can ramp up, an outside response can be drastically let me rephrase that. So once criminals realize that there is a lack of law enforcement, they usually jump on those situations and they don't care what the situation, they don't care if they could die from a disease. It's an opportunity for them because they're criminals, right? So when they see that, you need to make sure that you're prepared for lower law enforcement response because they could, again, like I just said, be at home with their families not wanting to go and get sick to then bring that home to their family. Because again, the incubation time is really long. So there's a lot of unknowns with this specific uh, virus. And your law enforcement, federal, state, local, military, whatever it is, are going to be directed to go to high risk areas. So those are gonna be hospitals, gas stations, stores, places where things can go wrong. So if you have someone that's trying to break into your house, A, traffic's probably gonna be nuts and they won't be able to get through easily. And B, there might just not be enough officers to come. So you need to be able to defend where you want to stay. Next, we have fortify your home. This can be your apartment, your house, your property, whatever it might be, your RV, if that's what you're choosing to do. And you need to have a way, again, as previously stated, to defend, well, on the fortify side, just to make it yourself a hard target. <clears throat> you don't wanna be a soft target that a criminal can say, oh, that looks easy, let me go take their stuff. You wanna look a little more hardened and like you're not gonna be easy to rob. The next thing is a form of distance protection that can be used against multiple assailants in a home invasion scenario. Now, this is gonna get into firearms, so we'll see how this goes for YouTube. I refrain from stating firearms because I know more and more of the viewers on this channel are uh, from outside the United States where firearms are not an option. So typically that's why I don't even bring it up. Um, and YouTube is extraordinarily strict on stuff with firearms. What I wanted to say to firearms though, is if, um, if you have the ability and training, a firearm is a good option. I know there's gonna be some proponents that don't like guns, and there are some people, and for many reasons. Sometimes they had a, a bad experience, they don't feel safe around them, whatever that might be, that's fine. Everyone can live the life that they want to. All I'm saying is, if you have the ability and you want a firearm, you have to train with it. Do not go to the store and just buy one and have it and not know about it. If you are not allowed to or choose not to have a firearm, then something like a bow and arrow or a slingshot is an option. Yes, these are not typical, but they have been used for thousands of years and will probably be used for many more years to come. If you are not comfortable with a firearm or are waiting for a reason to buy one, this is not it. First, a firearm needs to be learned and trained First, a firearm needs to be learned and trained with a lot. Second, you need time to train. You can't just watch some videos by John Lovell and some other stuff and then say you're good in an hour. Training takes time. It takes a lot and lot of time. And you have to know that if you are going to choose to have a firearm to defend yourself, you know, legally make sure that's done first, but then also you need to make sure that you know what you're doing. In a time of heightened stress, um, like anything else, if you don't have muscle memory behind it, you're going to fumble. And when you are in a life and death situation, 
that is not the time to fumble. Either know what you're gonna do or pick something else. Those are your options. Please do not be a person that buys something and when trying to figure it out, trying to figure out how it works, hurts yourself because it happens a lot all over the world, whether it's a gun or not, someone trying to figure out something works, they hurt themselves and now you're just in a worse off situation. And you do not want to be in a situation where you have to go to a hospital if where you are has an active infection area. You just don't want to put yourself in that situation. It continues with, um, there are numerous classes all over the planet, but these take time. Again, time. Use this, this when I'm speaking of COVID-19, um, or if you're watching something else and the world is going crazy in the future, um, take this opportunity and learn from this situation what you'd like to know. And if you still are someone that does not have a firearm but would like one, then when this all passes, take that time, take some money and go train. Talk to people that know about firearm safety. That's, that's a number one. Talk to people that know about firearm safety in your home. That's another one. If you have kids, how do you teach them and how do you keep firearms in a safe, uh, in, a, in an ability to have a safe home with your firearms because it is a responsibility. And then practice, you know, and go somewhere to practice. Don't just go to the range and, you know, shoot down the line. Go somewhere you're actively going to run, you're going to use uh, cover, what, whatever those situations are, just make sure you go to those. But don't just get a gun and think that's going to help stuff. So there are plenty of options. There's a Berna, that's a non-lethal, and it does have enough kick uh, to, you know, at least make someone think twice. Um, again, I know I said slingshot, but I mean those balls are sometimes the size of nine millimeter bullets and they can go really fast and cause a lot of damage. I mean, they're steel ball bearings flying at someone with, with you know, force. Uh, and then a bow, I mean, the, you people still hunt with that, so it's, it is an option. Moving on, food, the, obvious, the first and obvious is supply chain. As seen in China, Italy, and South Korea, at this point, when panic buying become, begins, supplies do not last long, and when, again as seen in China, Italy, and South Korea, when a hot zone is declared and a quarantine instituted travel in and out of restricted area to, sorry, when a quarantine is established and it's set up for people only as a needed basis, so that's not the general public. That's not you, that's not me, that's, you know, that's, that's people that have to get in for work. This means those store shelves will not be stocked quickly. So once those shelves are empty, if you are in those, you know, kind of dire situations, that means that those trucks are not coming soon to restock. Water. You need water stored for one week in a rugged case similar to water bricks. It would also be prudent to filter your water from, multi multi from municipal water sources. While typical water, excuse me, while typical public potable water utilities do chemically treat your water, if the situation around you has become bad enough, a possible four qu full quarantine is happening, you should take enough precautions, take, as, take every precaution you can to give yourself every advantage as possible. So that means just like everything, you wanna make sure you're giving yourself every chance at not getting something, and then if you get it, giving yourself, yourself every chance to get better from it. We're almost done, I promise. We're running at 25 minutes. I'll try and knock this next part out. General supplies, what should you have? Two months of toilet paper, two months of paper towels. It is good to have washable napkins and washable dish towels because that will save in the long run. But you also want to have paper towels for wiping down with a bleach solution before you bring anything into your home. These towels can be thrown away or burned if possible, so remaining contaminants cannot grow and spread. Bleach, lots and lots of bleach. 
your common groceries that you would get on a regular basis, just extra. Long-term food storage, this is Thrive or Mountain House, whatever you choose, or whatever brand, but some kind of freeze-dried food for two months for each person that will be with you during an emergency. Spices and seasonings that you like because stuff is gonna get dull. Drink mixes like Crystal Light Lemonade or some other kind of uh, water solution drink mix. Entertainment, in a worst case scenario, internet and non-emergency television and radio could be stopped. This is a good time to have board games, cards, books of board games, eBooks, real books, something that can help pass the time. The next thing is vice items. Uh, candy and chocolate, something just to help you smile. And they can also be treats for kids because if you have kids, it could be hard if you have to get there and they're just not used to that. And then tobacco and alcohol. But to go with tobacco and alcohol, I do not encourage and I try to never encourage bad habits that are unhealthy. However, if you are a smoker or you drink on a regular basis, a pandemic and forced quarantine is not the time that you want to be into withdrawals. That is a, a chemical change in your body that you do not want to deal with in the midst of everything else. So if you are a person that, that does a lot of tobacco or drinking, you need something to either wean yourself off, think about that ahead of time, or now, um, or, or just have that as a supply. But you do not need to be in withdrawals chemically because that's just gonna put responders at risk because you're gonna call 911 because you think you're dying. So just don't be one of those people. Water filtration and purification tablets or bleach. Solar power options to charge your phone and flashlights. Rechargeable flashlight for everyone with you. And I'm gonna do a video next. Uh, you don't have to have a really good Surefire Streamlight rechargeable flashlight. You do for you know everyday carry and personal stuff. But in your house, it's good to have just general um, rechargeable flashlights. I'm gonna do a, a cheap $20 pair that I found. Ability to wash clothes with hot water and soap. Dawn, the dishwashing soap, lots and lots of Dawn. Dawn can be used for lots of stuff. So I made a list here of what it can be used for. Body wash, hand washing, dishes, surfaces, counter, any surface, uh, vehicles, clothes, anything you need to wash. Dawn is a very good Swiss Army knife of soap and it's just really good to have. And Dawn, Lysol, and bleach are, are pretty good basics. Next, I'll go through, we have tools. You have a hammer, Phillips flathead screwdriver, electrical tape, duct tape, zip ties, small amount of wood, more drywall screws, a tape measure, a drill with a spare battery, needle nose pliers, normal pliers, diagonal cutters, those are just the strong wire cutters, Crescent wrench, safety glasses, work gloves for everyone. Everyone needs work gloves. You don't need to hurt your hands in addition to stuff going crazy. LED light bulbs, if you're running on a generator, you can swap out a ton of light bulbs in your house that are still bright for the equivalent of one 100, one 100 watt light bulb. And that will mean less fuel and less load on your generator. Jumper cables for your car. Your car can be sitting for a long time. You need to be able to jump it. Same thing if you don't have another car to jump it with and you do have you do have to go to the hospital if something happens, then a car booster pack with an air compressor. Next, gasoline with Stable. So Stable uh, is stuff additive you can put in so your gasoline doesn't degrade. They make it for diesel also. Then uh, three months of toothbrushes. That could be one toothbrush, it could be 20, it's whatever your family does. Three months of toothpaste and three months of floss. Your mouth is the is a key part in your body being healthy, so you need a clean mouth, especially if things are going crazy. Medical stuff. Almost done, I promise. Medical stuff. You will not want to go to a hospital to chance getting sick if at all possible. This means for basics you need to be self-sufficient for a while. 
major trauma items. These are tourniquets, Israeli bandages, sterile, sterile roller gauze, occlusive dressings, that's for chest wounds. And again, those are to get you to the hospital. But remember, an ambulance might not be coming to you or they could be really backed up and you have to go. And even going, even though you're you're in severe trauma, a severe trauma situation, the hospital may not have a human to deal with you right now. So you need to make sure you can do that. General medical drugs, you need fever reducers like Tylenol or Advil, and uh, you can Google how to alternate those. Strong over-the-counter meds like goodies powder, uh, that's something to look into. Decongestants like Mucinex, uh, especially like if you're looking at something that causes a lot of uh, congestion. Children's fever reducers. So you can look at the same thing, uh, Tylenol, uh, Motrin, stuff like that. Talk to your, your pediatrician, see what they recommend. And then everyday needed medication, whatever you normally take. And then basics, various size band-aids, because a closed wound heals faster than an opened, and if things get desperate, and you really are on your own, and you're really having to do stuff, splinters used to kill people hundreds of years ago, they can do it again. Lots of triple antibiotic ointment like Neosporin, finger SAM splints, leg SAM splints, tweezers, magnifying glass, moisturizing eye drops, sensitive skin lotion, because you're gonna be washing your hands a lot. Lots of sterile four by fours that can be used for lots of stuff. Hydrogen peroxide. Um, I, so rubbing alcohol is what that, um, that is, uh, in, which can be used for a lot of stuff. N95 masks with vents, nitrile gloves, sizes for you and everyone that's with you, uh, forehead temple thermometer, a couple of them, and batteries for them. Next is communications. Uh, world band radio with a uh, high frequency, with high frequency and ability to power it. World Band Reference Book, they sell books that have the whole planet in their uh, stations, who's there, what time they talk, and all that kind of stuff. That's really good. Chargers for your cell phone. Cell phones are still really good. Uh, the chances of cell phone networks going down are very low, but it's always possible. So even if the cell phone can't make a call, you can use stuff if you have a Go Tenna. If you have an Iridium Go, you can use it for that. You can use it for games, books, all kinds of stuff. Two-way radios for each person with the ability to charge. Satellite phone or a satellite two-way messenger if traditional cell phone networks uh, have an outage. Radio scanner, I've done the unit in Home Patrol 2, I think is what it's called. And that's a really good one. That way you know what's going on with your public, um, public sectors. So your police, fire, water, all that kind of stuff. Okay, then to wrap this very long video up, uh, the last thing is a religious book. I don't put this in here to cause panic because th that's already out there. Um, but I do think in a pandemic, this is important. I personally am a Christian and I have a paper Bible that uh, we have as a family. We have, I mean, we have a few of them, but um, we have one that stays with us um, away from our main house. And uh, when you get scared and there is an unknown out there, and I mean truly, genuinely scared for your life, um, you're going to reach out to something. You're going to pray. You're going to yell out to someone. And um, I have known several atheists and even in those situations those atheists have said they have turned to a faith of some kind and if you are in a position like in china putting the religious uh, restrictions of china to the side if you are in china or some other part of the world where you have people dying around you you have no supplies you are pooping in a bucket hopefully you don't know what the next two hours is gonna bring, let alone the next day. When you are in that level of a situation, which I hope again, we don't get to, but when you're in that level of a situation, you will want to have something to look up to of higher power. Um, if you are a different religion other than Christianity, 
then you need to have a, a paper book of whatever it is you believe. And that is really, really important because you need something to rely on when for real things start to go south, okay? Then conclusion, I want to restate again, now that now is not the time to panic. However, not, now is the time to be vigilant with global current events. If you have the ability to prepare, then you should. If you do not have the ability to prepare, a good option is to buy a little extra each time you go to the store and to get a little more cash each time you get paid. I mean, actual cash in hand. Over time, this will add up to a healthy insurance plan. And I don't mean health insurance or life insurance, I mean food insurance and living insurance, being able to eat and go to the bathroom and have healthy things, that kind of insurance. I also want to state this current situation will pass just like every other past pandemic. The Spanish flu passed, Ebola passed, all these things have passed. Some were significantly more catastrophic than others. Time will tell how this goes. We are still very early on to this whole thing. This, it has only been nine weeks into late December when this whole thing spun up. And we are looking at some really bad numbers. So we have a long way to go, but it will pass. This will hopefully be a lesson for us as a planet where supply bottlenecks are globally and to use this as a to be a better global economy and a global society we are watching especially in the last week uh, every global market crashing and every monetary system showing those results uh, food supplies are being hurt uh, Every freeze dry company that I know of is either out of or going to be out of soon of all their stuff. Um, masks, I mean, that's an obvious one that's gone. So, you know, hopefully this will be something where people, when this all passes again, that it'll remind people to want to be better prepared. So when this happens again, history will repeat itself. There will be some other pandemic. There will be some other major global disaster. When that comes, then they will be better prepared to survive that situation and to thrive in that situation. Because what I hope to do on this channel with this company is not just to help you find ways to survive through something, because the, the human body can survive a lot. My goal is to help you thrive in these situations. My goal is to not have you eating, you know, small cups of food, but be able to have proper meals, to be able to be, you know, mentally and physically and emotionally healthy when this kind of stuff comes up. Thank you for watching. I know this is a long video. I hope this is helpful. And again, this document will be available on the SFM Pro website under downloads and it's called Procedures for Pandemic. Thank you for watching.